Hi everyone, today I'm going to be showing how to make a simple walk animation and I'm going to be covering stuff such as motion path and making a repetitive cycle or making it run and run. You want to put this in orthographic view. You can do that by pressing num5 and you'll see this grid come up. It only appears when you're on left, right, top, or bottom views can't really do it when you're rotating them to another different position. And this is a model that I used. This is a test model, first one that I used. I always use this one, but uh, for today I'll be using him because he's fully rigged and skinned. And you're animating the bones because the bones are a child of the model. So it's the bones you need to animate. So for our simple walking motion, um, I'm going to start off with a resting position where he's about to take a step. And I'm going to make it, uh, going to be rotating a lot of the bones. Now I'm using, those yellow bones right now are indication that they're the tips for inverse kinematics. Right now I would be using forward kinematic where you just rig every individual bone. But inverse kinematics, you can move one bone and it'll move other bones that are associated with it. Um, and also, I had started off with the bone that's right near the pelvis. That's the pelvis bone. And that moves everything. So I can use that to move the entire structure without having to mess up everything. So you just um, eventually. Then when you want to insert a keyframe, you will go on keyframe number one, make sure you're on keyframe number one, select all the bones, so press A. You're in pose mode also. And then you press I, and in this case, it's lock rot, which stands for location rotation. We did not scale anything, so we only did locating and rotating. That's what you put in there. And you do the same for the second pose which is, um, I believe I moved ahead like 10 frames, you will take forward, sort of, uh, where it's, he's taking one foot forward. Now, I've had some experience with 2D animation, so I'm kind of doing this manually by eyeballing from straight memory. There are a lot of references that you can use. They're all over the internet and YouTube, so you can just go ahead and look at them at reference. and. You'll end up looking for references when you're animating to get the right pose and the right motion to make it look as realistic as possible. But for the sake of the tour, for the tutorial, I'm kind of rushing it. You're going to end up flipping between two keyframes. Like, for example, once you insert the next keyframe, which, in, which is a yellow line, uh, a yellow bar on the timeline, it, you will have to you'll probably flip to the first one and the second one to see wh whether or not if it goes smoothly. And um, obviously, if there's something you don't like, you'll end up changing it or tweaking it like I am right now. Now, you practically all get the idea. I'm going to fast forward here. Like every time frame or pose you make, those keyframes, I would like to call them in-betweens. Sometimes they make extra poses because I'm a little nitpicky about certain details of walking. But um, anyway. If you want to keep a keyframe, you select all the bones after you have posed it and pre and you press I, lock rot. If you're scaling something, then you're going to have to click I, then lock rot scale. And uh, there's a good example of inverse kinematic. I'm moving that one thumb, and as you can see, the arm starts to move around with it. Now here's where that one side of the leg is practically done, and I need to get on to moving the other leg. There is an easier way to do this, but for some reason when I tried here, it didn't work out well. For example, uh, this pose where he's lifting his one leg, I'm going to copy it, and then in the next frame, I would paste it. But instead, I'm going to paste X flipped pose. What it would do it would... Uh, reverse flip it so that way it'll look like the other leg but unfortunately as you can see this happened I don't know why maybe I named all my bones wrong in, during the rigging process but I was pretty frustrated 
So that means I'm going to have to do it manually. Now, actually, I don't mind doing it manually because I've had some experience with this sort of thing. Not 3D, but 2D-wise. I've worked with Flash before. For all of you, I'm hoping this won't happen again. If anybody knows, please let me know so I can try to prevent this from happening and to save myself time. Though there is one thing I do regret. I had wished that I had done a better job at making the bones because just having them uh, linked with those small little lines really isn't enough. I should have made hip bones and an actual shoulder bone attached to make it easier because when and that and I needed to put restraints on it so that way the shoulders wouldn't be moving away from the actual body otherwise it would stretch the mesh in a very weird and distorted way but it's kind of working for this character specifically for our other human models that's really physically impossible because because you cannot disembowel dis your shoulder and make it stretch no you'd die I want to keep the shoulder, yeah, I'm going to get that shoulder and in the single bone panel, I'm going to lock those XYZ coordinates there so that way they will not move out of place. Because I did not do that in the first place, now um, it's going to be hard to remember where exactly the shoulder was placed. And then I'm just going to fast forward here because you all practically know the drill. You'll have to look in between frames just to tweak up the uh, frames in between so that way it looks more natural and remember if you want to save any changes make sure that in that keyframe you select all the bones which you can do just by pressing A and then you insert the new keyframe by pressing I lock rot that's a little food for thought because if you just select one single bone it will not store you have to s select all the bones in that armature and while you're all waiting um, and watching, this character, his name is Jason. He was the very first one I made. I used him as a test model, as I had mentioned earlier. I can't use Ethel May because I still have to work on her. Apparently, you're supposed to put clothes on later, like for example, so that way it's easier to animate. So I had to take out the clothes. She still has her texture mapping on, but anyway. Jason was practically my guinea pig. So I did rigging on him first, so this is an entire learning curve for me. So that's why everything's not as so smooth and polished as compared to my all of my other tutorials. At the near end of the walk cycle, I'm going to copy the first pose and paste it on the next, at the last, right up, like as I'm doing right now. Uh, well, actually, that's not the first pose. It's somewhere in between where the, both legs are actually resting. And I'll just have to tweak that, of course. Here on the first pose, um, the head was tilted down too much, and I didn't like that. So I'm bringing it up a bit, and I'm fixing the position there, so that way it's almost identical to the very last one. Now this is the graph editor. Don't freak out, that's only because you selected all the bones. If you select only one bone, it'll only show the certain coordinates like X, Y, Z or so. And you can use this to um, fine tune any sort of animation, like if you want to move the thumb or pinky or whatever. And this is your dope sheet. Uh, yeah, funny name, but this is where it records every animation, every movement. And it's pretty nifty once you get the hang of it. I copied the first pose in between, like at frame number five, between the first walk and the rest pose. Why? Because I it's dragging on too long, so I'm going to um going to delete that first keyframe over there. Make sure nothing else is selected. So you can use border select here on this dope sheet. Then you're gonna go over to key, and you're gonna select I believe delete keyframes. The selected ones, of course. Now go ahead and select all the other keyframes by pressing A on that dope sheet. Then you're going to move them all by uh, pressing G, just like you would with any other object. 
and then you'll just drag it over to uh, frame number one with the mouse. And that's practically it. Where it says dope sheet, I'm gonna select um, action editor, and it almost looks like it, but except this one's only including the walk animation we did. I'm going to name it a certain name, so right there, you see where it has those three dots, like a triangle? That's where you can go ahead and name it, so I'm going to call it walk. Now we're going to add a motion path. So I want you to go ahead and uh, go back to default, and we're going to um, make sure that the 3D cursor is centered right there. So you can do that by pressing Shift C and we're going to add a NURBS path, or you can just add another path so you can do that. And you just um, edit the line to or the path to however you wish. You can make it long, curvy, to exact patterns, everywhere. Now that pelvis bone controls the entire skeleton, so I'm going to select that in pose mode. Then I'm going to go to bone constraint, which has a bone and a chain link to it, and I'm going to select follow path, and I'm going to target it to the nerves path, or whatever path it is. And so far, it's looking good. You might have to change the forward direction, like you might be better working on X or negative Z, but right now it's good. Now select the path in object mode, and you're going to go over to that uh, panel that has looks like a path. You're going to go down towards path animation and you'll change the evaluation time. You're going to animate the evaluation time there. So you see how it's moving? Yeah. So basically you're supposed to be animating in segments. So after every 20 keyframes, it's going to be um the evaluation time should be um maybe 10 or like 10 points ahead or 20 points ahead depending like for example first keyframe I believe it started on 0 or 1 it's uh, set to 0 because it's not moving then as you go tw uh, 20 keyframes it's gonna be moved to I believe 11 or 10 I'm not sure but um yeah if you want to insert a keyframe there you have to do it by putting the mouse over on top of evaluation time and press I once it's yellow it means it's become a keyframe I was wondering why it wasn't working until I figured out later. Oh yeah, and you can also change the path while you're animating too. So if you don't like the path, you can always shorten or lengthen it or whatever. Back in animation, uh, in the animation uh, uh, window, I'm going to turn that into a cycle. So in other words, I'm going to make it repeating, or it'll be cyclic. Everything should be selected, so you're going to go to Channel, Extrapolation Mode, and Make Cyclic, and there you go. It's now a never-ending cycle of walking. Now I'm viewing from camera view, so if you want to play it, you press Alt-A, or you can just play the play button, but there's a problem here. It's sort of lagging when it comes to the resting position right after taking like the two steps. So I have to do something about it. In other words, I'm going to have to get rid of the frame number 34, which is practically the same pose as the first one. This is making it lag, and that just makes everything look a little weird and awkward. So um, select a keyframe that's right before the last one and make that into its own separate keyframe. Then we're going to go into the dope sheet and we're going to get rid of frame number 35. I'm sorry, it was it's frame number 34 you need to get rid of. So border select the keyframes in the dope sheet for frame number 34 and once you've selected those, you can just delete it by pressing X and just delete keyframes. And now it's one less and as you can see it's much more smoother at least, but obviously I'm going to have to work on timing, so in this case, my only problem would be I'd have to make the evaluation time a lot faster between segments, but other than that, that's practically it. I hope you found this more beneficial, and feel free to leave any questions, comments uh, down in the comment box. Goodbye.